Hi, hello. Today we're building mushrooms. They can make a great way to spice up your forests and add interest to your landscape. And if you want a fairy house, all you have to do is knock a door into a larger mushroom. We're going to be covering all sorts of ways that you can make them from small to big and all sorts of shapes and patterns. The smallest mushroom that you can make is having a small slab or block on a pole like an end rod or a fence post, unless you want to use the actual mushrooms that are in game. Stepping up the size a bit, we get into using things like pointed dripstone and twisting vines and walls to create mushroom stems and slabs for a flat top or a shallow gradient on your mushrooms and stairs for a dome look if that's the style you want. You can also swap out the bottom block of your mushroom stem for a whole block to give it the illusion of widening at the base. Going bigger, we break out the whole block stems. From this point on, we can get into some pretty cool stem and top shapes as we get bigger. We will still stay with a generally circular shape, but we can start breaking out some really cool stuff. At this size, mushrooms are very forgiving for what block you make them out of. And you can get away with most blocks or textures. I personally prefer a lighter stem, but that's just personal preference. We can start with twisting the stems around, and I've found this works easiest and the most dramatically with thinner stemmed mushrooms. And an easier way to get them to work is to make a plus shape and then repeat the plus shape upwards in the direction you want to go. It can lead to some really cool looking twisty stems. That can look particularly awesome if you have a bunch of them together. With wider stems, you can start to break out circles and build our mushrooms. The most basic mushroom stem at this scale is a cylinder, but that's a bit bland. So a couple of ways you can spice it up a little are by tapering it at the top so it's thinner. And to do this, make another circle at the height that you want your mushroom to be at. And then make a connecting line between the two circles or eyeball it. Eyeballing is always an option. You can add a bulb at the base of your mushroom by giving it a wider part a block or two above the base and then tapering it back in. This can be taken to the extreme where it's almost a sphere for the stem and you can get some really round squat mushrooms that make for really good houses. On the opposite end of a tapered stem you have the top coming down to meet the stem. To make this Make a curve from where your mushroom top is or where you want the mushroom top to go. Repeat the curve around the mushroom and fill it in. If you want, you can go and knock out every other set of blocks or so and then duck in behind them and add lighting or a contrast block for detail. On to mushroom tops. You have almost all the flexibility here. The only thing pinning you down is the fact that mushroom tops come in a vaguely circular shape, unless they're damaged or have fancy edges. Within that, mushrooms have a lot of shapes. Some are flat, some are domed, some come with that very tall pointy tip, and some of them sink towards the center. It can start to look a little sci-fi the more you look into it, if you start looking at the pictures. Adding patterns or texture is something mushrooms are very forgiving for. Dots? Go for it! Spice terracotta patterns? Absolutely! Slimy, gooey looking mushrooms? To do that, add a semi-transparent block like ice or slime and then cover it with stained glass. Add a bit of dribbly bits using the stained glass coming down from your mushroom and your set. You can even use a fog effect for your mushroom top if your mushroom is big enough. As for texture, 
This is one that tends to be in your block choice rather than your detailing, unless you're going super big. But adding a cut or a missing chunk or something hanging beneath your mushroom will add something eye-catching and unique. Hope you enjoy. See you next time.